Good morning. I'm Todd Brandon. I'm from the Computing Systems Group at Cisco. And today I want to talk about something really big. Strata is all about big things. Uh, and I kind of want to show you some of the really interesting things that happen when we digitize and fully connect something really massive. So Cisco is a supporter of the Olympic, the Paralympic Games. We obviously take considerable pride in the uh, contributions that our people and our technology make to this event. And as you all know, you know, for the first time, the games were held in South America this year. So there were a lot of firsts, a lot of records that were set, obviously by the athletes themselves, this guy. If you consider the modern games an extension of the games that were held in ancient Greece, Michael Phelps set a record that was held since the second century BC for the most individual titles. But that's not why he's my hero. He's my hero because he's the old guy. And he came back and, and just completely kicked some butt at the game. So, you know, the, the, a lot of the other records that were set at the games were really set by the event itself. So think about the enormous scale of this thing. You've got 15,000 athletes from over 200 countries. On the ground, you've got 70,000 volunteers, 85,000 security personnel, 25,000 members of the media. That's before the spectators even show up. And then you have all the venues with their sensors, the cameras, right, the timers, the Olympic Village, and all of this, all of these people, all of these devices, all of these things connected by a single unifying network. Now that obviously presents a pretty juicy target, right, with a large attack surface. And so we had 5,000 wireless access points, we had 440 of our UCS servers there in the data center, the data feeds, the websites themselves, and we detected and blocked 23 million attacks on this network during the Olympics. And I think that has to set some sort of record, but it's the kind that nobody hears about, and we're perfectly fine with that, right? You don't want to make news on security. So we did this in London, we did it in Rio, we're getting ready for Tokyo, but what does this kind of secure and pervasive connectivity enable? So we partnered with NBC, they broadcast the games to five billion viewers worldwide. Right, that's a big number. But the number on this slide that I want you to really wrap your head around is the online video content that was generated at the Summer Olympics. 170,000 hours of online video content. That's a lot of table tennis, right? And, and let's be honest with ourselves, the, the reason that matters is because of the way it changes how people can connect to an event like the Olympics. A lot of strange things happen at the Summer Olympics. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it, right? Events like dressage. Do I have dressage fans out there? This is horse dancing. It's a thing, horse dancing, right? Um, you've got the speed walking, get the hips going. And if your cousin happens to be going for gold in synchronized trampoline, that's going to be important to you. But in a world where we had monolithic broadcast feeds and you couldn't get to the game to see her compete, you're going to probably miss that event. But now with this ability to comprehensively connect every venue, ingest all that data, and make it securely available to the world, we change the way that billions of people can connect to and experience an event like the Olympics. We think that's pretty cool. So what else do we see at the Olympics? This is a sensor on the wrist of a martial artist. And I think instrumentation in sport is obviously becoming very pervasive. You know, this allows for the spatial location of the hands, the frequency, the, the speed at which uh, the punches are being thrown, and you can take that data after a practice session and analyze it to improve your, your tactics, to improve your chance of winning. But what's changing now is that it's going real time, right? In order to perform at their best, these athletes need to know what's happening when it's happening. They need to know the now, right? If you want to know the now in your technology infrastructure, check out Cisco Tetration. But again, what's really interesting to me now is how this is all going real time. This is an example of real time telemetry being put onto a wearable device for a cyclist. In 2012 in London, we saw the first use of uh, all the uh, athletes' data being comprehensively gathered into an electronic, electronic medical record system. And this has obvious benefits as the athletes are traveling around the world, they're trying to manage to their performance. They're trying to prevent injury or, or recover from it. And so all of these things that we learn at an event like the Olympics obviously have applicability in the greater world. And this is how, you know, supporting these types of things is how Cisco is how we exercise our, our muscles. 
And I will tell you that you know the, the things that we're really focused on right now are how do we automate, how do we simplify all of the technology in the data center, the network, that can power these kinds of innovations. That's the role that we're going to play, the software, the hardware that go into this. And we are really technology optimists. So we believe that the more we can connect the unconnected people, places, right, objects, things, data, the better off the world's going to be. And there's never been a better time for that. Hope you guys enjoy Data After Dark. That's all I've got. Thank you very much.